blog. My name is Josh Williamson, and um, it's been a while since I've had a lesson up. There's been a lot of things going on. I, I honestly haven't had too much time. Uh, I recently graduated from SIUE uh, with degrees in performance and composition, and um, I, I also uh, was recently accepted as the graduate assistant uh, at Butler University, and so I'm going to be heading out to Indianapolis for graduate school in the fall, and uh, things have just been been pretty crazy. So I'm, I'm excited to get back into it and uh, I want to encourage you to leave comments. If, if you have any feedback, I, I more than welcome that. And uh, you can leave that at uh, totalpercussionblog.blogspot.com or you can send me an email at jwilliamson1987 at gmail.com and uh, I, I would love to hear from you guys and if you have any suggestions on further lessons, um, anything you want me to talk about, I, I would love to hear that. And so uh, today, I'm going to start with uh, uh, the marimba and, and discuss some front ensemble uh, techniques and philosophy that I have as marching band approaches. Uh, I know the Granite City, uh, the ensemble I work with, we've gotten together, and I know a lot of others are starting to as well. And I think it's, it's good for, for some sort of direction to be given as far as front ensemble technique and how it relates to, to battery technique. And so that's what I'm going to talk about today. And so let's go ahead and jump right into this. Uh, the first thing that I'm going to talk about is a height system. And a lot of batteries use a height system to represent dynamics. And I do the same thing. I start with a 3-inch dynamic level and go all the way up to 15. And front ensemble is going to abide by the exact same rules. The only difference is, instead of starting 1 inch from the playing surface, as I have my battery do, I'm going to have the front ensemble start at the height that they play at. And I believe that that gives a unification throughout the ensemble as they are allowed to look around and they can see down the line where the heights are. And the person in the center, or so presumably the front ensemble uh, uh, captain, will, will be able to make adjustments as necessary if the instructors are present. And so uh, 3 all the way up to 15 represents piano up to... Uh, fortissimo. And those dynamics, I feel, uh, get the job done. If I need to uh, accentuate those with, with accents, with marcato accents, I can take that approach. And I also want to stress the, the legato-ness of sound from front ensemble. Uh, there, there is not a sense of putting sound into the keyboard, but it's a sense of drawing the sound out in whatever you do. So I'm going to start with some two mallet ideas. And the first thing I'm going to just to discuss is Playing the scale uh, in octaves, being able to listen to your hands play together at a height and then play the scale with a group of people. So I'm just going to start with F major and we're going to play it at a height of six inches. So that way we hit every single scale, and then we also move on to the minors and do the same thing with the natural minors. And if they're really good by the end of the year, we might be getting into uh, some of the modes and some of the more complex minors. Okay, and let's move on from the vertical strokes to the single independent strokes. And let's talk about the technique that we're going to use there. I'm going to use the same technique that I would use in a concert setting. And so we're going to try to stay legato, lifting tone, lifting our sound out of the bars the entire time. And I'm gonna use the green pattern for our scales. We're gonna play through a couple scales in the circle of fifths. And I'm all gonna raise the height now up to nine inches. So we started at six, um, and that's our mezzo piano dynamic level. And I'm gonna jump it up to nine, which is our mezzo forte dynamic level. So I'm gonna start with C, and we'll go through a couple scales in the circle of fifths at a nine inch dynamic level. Alright, 
for, for some basic two mallet technique. And if you've got some questions, feel free to ask, um, and I'll be able to go into some more stuff uh, in detail with you if I need to. And I'm going to jump to some four mallet technique because a lot of our front ensemble literature calls for four mallet technique, especially if we have a smaller front ensemble, to get uh, more colors and more sounds out of the group. And so if you're a cross stick player or if you're a Steven script player, all this technique stuff will apply. I'm going to discuss four mallet technique with a Steven script point of view, but uh, the, the same applications you can also uh, accomplish with your cross stick grip. And so I'm going to detail just a little bit uh, Steven script. If, if you want to know more information, uh, uh, Tom Burrett actually just put up a new PATV episode and uh, he really discussed some good uh, technique issues with Steven script. So you might want to check that out. Um, uh, I will post the link up under my blog. It's uh, thomasburrett.tumblr.com. Uh, and you can check out his video blog. He's got some cool stuff going on. And uh, he's, he's uh, very knowledgeable. And I want to say hey to him if he's watching. And uh, so I'm going to discuss uh, some similar technique stuff with uh, the, the Steven script. And uh, make sure that when we pick up our mallets, we're going to start uh, in one hand just as if we were two mallet grip. And uh, nothing is going to change except I'm going to pull back a little bit. And uh, when, I, when I talk about two mallet grip, I tend, let me come up with the camera, I tend to choke up just a little bit on my two mallet grip and maybe just a little bit more. Uh, that, that feels comfortable to me where that balance point is in the stick. And so when I uh, play some four mallet stuff, I'm going to pull back on that grip. And everything else is going to stay the same. I'm going to base this as my grip. And what's going to happen is this outside mallet is going to come up into the hand. Okay? And maybe as the technique works, it might get jammed up just a little bit taller. But our fulcrum is still intact from before. And what happens is the other mallet is going to be held with the pinky finger and the ring finger at the very edge of the stick. There's nothing else sticking out. Nothing sticking out at all. And then the, the mallets are going to hold at an angle, exactly like this. And so they aren't going to be perfectly straight. The thumb is going to remain on top. It's absolutely important that the thumb remains on top because that will allow that mallet to hang down. And you can see that they are even, but the shafts are not. And you might even be able to see it a little bit better this way that the shafts are not even, but the mallet heads are. And so we make a rotation in our wrist, and that is how we use this four mallet Steven script. And so you're going to make the left hand look exactly like the right hand. And so as far as an application to the marimba, we're going to use this rotational motion with the thumb on top on the very end of the stick. All right, and so, and so I'm going to close up uh, briefly and just sum up what we've talked about today. And uh, this is just really the tip of the iceberg for uh, marching percussion and front ensemble. And if you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And I can go into some stuff a little deeper if you want me to. And uh, I just want to stress the fact that my technique uh, is cross-platform, okay? In between orchestral playing and marching playing and anything in between and, and small chamber groups and soloistic stuff. I think it's important that the technique remains the same. And so what you've seen today, you might say, oh, that's just orchestral work. Well, yeah, it definitely could be. And that's my point, is that if I can teach the same way on all of these instruments, uh, students will probably latch on to them a little quicker, a little easier, and most likely they will remember the technique because it's used in so many different places. And so uh, if you have any questions, any comments, uh, please leave the comments here on uh, the Total Percussion blog blogspot.com and uh, you can also check me out on Facebook and uh, if you have any questions uh, I'm also on YouTube you can post comments there under the Total Perk blog and um, again my email is jwilliamson1987 at gmail.com and uh, I'd love to hear from you so thanks a lot we'll see you soon